Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is our weekly online event here. Um, yes, it is a webinar. You can call us that. Uh, we won't be offended by the term. Um, we cover a variety of library activities, topics, uh, basically anything going on in the library world, we want to have um, share it on our show. Um, the show is free and open for, to anyone to watch, um, both uh, the live sessions that we do um, and the recordings. Um, we do these shows live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, um, and then they are recorded as we're doing it. Uh, they are then um, posted onto our website, so if you aren't able to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. You go to our website and see all of our recordings going back to the very beginning when we started this in uh, actually January 2009. Uh, it's been a while now. Um, we do a mixture of things here, presentations, interviews, book reviews, mini training sessions. Like I said, anything library related. We are happy to have it on the show, and we do have commission staff, Nebraska Library Commission staff, that sometimes do presentations, but we also bring in guest speakers very often, as we have this morning. And today we have a uh, lively group <laughs> from our <laughs> South, <laughs> South Sioux City Public Library way up here in Nebraska, up in northeastern Nebraska, um, and they've been with us multiple times, but... Um, uh, two years ago, they did a session um, about um, turning your library around. Um, they did they, um, some new staff would come in, did some great changes, updates, um, new programming, and things. So um, the director there, um, Dave Mixdorf, is on the line with us today. Hi, Dave. Hello. Yeah, hello. And he contacted me and wanted to do an update to let you know what's been happening since the last time they were here. I hadn't realized it had been a whole two years. It didn't seem that long. <laughs> um, but I will hand it over to you guys now there, Dave, and you can um, introduce who's there with you and go ahead and take it away. Okay, thank you for being here today. Um, in the room in the office here, we have Odessa Meyer, who's the children's librarian, Dan Neiman, who's the assistant director, programming director, technology director, pretty much does everything, and then me, I'm Dave Mixer. <laughs> and um, to give you a little background right now, it's Probably, it's, we're supposed to have a warm today today. It's supposed to get up to about 25, so I've got shorts and a t-shirt on. <laughs> going to enjoy the outside weather while we got it. Um, and for those that don't know anything about our library, you notice the first picture here of the birds. Um, we have an aviary in our library, and that's kind of one of our very distinguishing things that people know about our library quite a bit. And just yesterday, we got three new birds that were introduced into it, some doves and an uh, orange uh, weaver-type bird that's from Africa. So we have a very unique kind of library here. And we're definitely different thinking compared to most libraries, or what I call the old-fashioned thinking library. That's definitely not us. So our present presentation is called Turning Your Program Around, Part 2. What the South Sioux City Public Library did to change the public perception of the library. And so we kind of used some of our old slides and added new stuff that we've been doing. So for people that haven't been here before, uh, June 1st, 2009, the library definitely changed. Uh, I was hired. Odessa was hired. The library board that was in existence was replaced and dismissed and a new board was put into place. The perception of the library at that time, it was boring. Nothing to do in the library. Programs didn't fit the needs of the people. When you walked in the door, the walls were white. There was nothing up on the walls, no posters, no books on display, nothing. You didn't see a kid in the library. And a lot of people's comments, they didn't know we even had a library in the community. So in the last five years, these are kind of the changes that we've seen. We'll go through some of our stats, because I like stats, and then we'll turn it over to Odessa. She'll tell you what we did with the kids area. Dan will tell some of the programming, and then I'll finish up with some of the other things that we've done. Circulation checkouts when we started, you can kind of see we've doubled, more than doubled, in just five years' time period. And a firm belief I have, when I stepped in, the first thing that I said, pick a genre, and this was to all the staff, and everybody started choosing books in their favorite genres. 
and we definitely saw checkouts improve quite a bit. And we really looked at kind of the unique genres that were here too. Um, not wanting to put down women, but in a lot of libraries that I'm at where it's a lot of female staff, they don't tend to think of guys sometimes for magazines and things like that. And our library, it was almost like 90% of the magazines were for women. And we kind of changed that, and now we see a lot of change in checkouts and different things like that. Computer usage, you can see it's gone up 10,000. Reference questions asked, just a little bit of a jump there. Adult programming attendance has just skyrocketed. This year, we're already ahead of where we were last year. And children's program attendance, the, the total that we have for 2008, 2009 back then, we are already at that number in the first four months of this year already. So we're looking at another increase this year for children's programming attendance. The number of programs is what, once I started counting this up, I kind of really had to stop and make sure I was getting the right numbers because it seemed odd. When we first started, there was about 160 programs in a year here at the library. It was the kids' programs and adults' programs. Now for this year, our children's programs will average around 600 programs in a year. And that's with one full-time children's librarian and a part-time library, children's librarian that takes over in the evening. We do around 100 adults' programs in a year. And we do around 800 technology classes in a year. And that's with a staff of 10 people, and only four of them are full time. So a total of about 1,500. So that's a little bit of a jump, too. What do we do to accomplish this turnaround? The big thing, and Dan will kind of talk about this a little bit, interviewed library patrons. Uh, that was one of the first things that we looked at for the people that were actually using the library. And then we wanted to figure out the people that don't use the library, you know, how to communicate with them. So we created a questionnaire. And I've actually sent the next questionnaire that we are going to be putting out. Um, and that's a handout that's available. Uh, we created a four-page questionnaire that we're going to be putting in different areas in the community and then also handing them out to library patrons and then putting it online. Uh, Dave? Meet and Dave? Re -meet. Dave? Yes. Yeah, hi. I just wanted to let everyone yeah. know that um, you, that's one of the things, the items that you sent me ahead of time. Yes. Yep, I've already, those of the handout um, and also another um, two hand documents that Dave sent me will be available um, with the show notes afterwards as well. I put them up into our SlideShare account so that people can um, see exactly what was on the questionnaire um, uh, for their own use. So it will be available afterwards for everyone. Okay. And then meet and re-meet, and I don't think re-meet's a real word, but I didn't know what other word to use, with civic groups and give presentations. And that's a very important thing because um, when you first start, especially as a new director, everybody wants to kind of meet you and see, see things like that. Well, you got to keep letting people know what you're doing at the library and how things are changing. Meet with your local agencies and see what the library could do to assist their agency. And that's something that I'm really kind of proud that we've been working on. We've got another couple things in the works right now that hopefully down the road will be quite a change for our library and might be something that other libraries can start doing. Talk with the area schools. Do a review of the services your community provides to try to fill in the gaps. For those that don't know our community, our community is about 50% Hispanic. Um, there is no movie theaters in our community. There is no music venue places. There's no museums. There's no sporting events except for high school type stuff. Um, the kids can participate in after school um, sports, but there's not any other kind of things that are in. There is a Y in our community, but it's kind of out of the reach of a lot of our patrons. So the library tends to be the spot for a lot of people to be able to go to. See what other libraries are doing and recreate their ideas to fit your needs. 
and we do that quite a bit. Utilize the skills of your staff. That's the one that I'm really always kind of surprised when I've talked to other people. I'm surprised how many people don't really ask their staff to help participate and do kind of unique things that they may have skills at doing. And then keep an open mind. Um, even if an idea doesn't catch on right away, keep trying. We have tried some things that maybe had one person show up at, and you try it again, one person, and then finally maybe it caught on. So that's a big thing. Just kind of keep trying. So now I'm going to turn it over to Odessa. Hello. Changes in our youth programming. Like they said, I was hired in uh, June of 2009. Uh, at the time that I was hired, story times were held consistently twice a week, and two programs that ran uh, once a month. And so that was that was their consistency. Uh, they said that I think there was like 160 total programs in the library when we both started. Um, we've increased that. I was three quarter time for the first um, two or three years. Two years I worked here, and I increased um, by. Uh, 200% or something like that uh, while I was three-quarter time. Now that I'm full-time and I have an assistant, uh, a part-time children's librarian in the evening, we've increased even more by offering different programs at different times. This Just to interrupt yeah. for one second. The one big thing that I found, because my ultimate goal was to get more children's librarians, and one thing I told Odessa and Dan, is we may be doing a lot of programs, but the big idea here is to show what can be done so we can actually get staffing numbers then up to be able to provide even more once they get impressed of what you're able to do with just a three-quarter time person. So that was the big emphasis on why we were doing so much at the beginning, too. And so um, this year, now that I have myself at full time and we have an evening, um, we're very fortunate to have an evening part-time gal working with me, we can do four story time programs a week. That's just for the preschool and toddlers. Now, if you don't have a lot of time to plan or you're part time, do four, you know, do multiple ones. They can be the same story time. They can be the same craft, the same story. Offer them at multiple times, uh, different times through the day to fit other, fit working in as non-working parents or not outside the home working parents. Um, we show two movies a week. That is a, no staff needs to be there watching. You know, we have it in our library hall, and uh, we can put the movie in, and it'd be good. Um, I have a baby story time once a week. That has become an increasing uh, attendance. The attendance has been increasing quite a bit on that one, because word of mouth is finally getting out. We have an art program, which is uh, free art uh, that I set out supplies and they come in and they make their art program or they make it they make their art project. So we have a weekly night of fun program which can be anything from board games to jigsaw puzzles to uh, creating a little a handheld game out of paper plates and a balloon, things like that. And once a week we have a, a employee here who is bilingual. Um, that's once a month. And she does a Spanish story time for us. I do the craft and she does the book. And then we were fortunate to be able to add clubs that are held once a week, and we'll get into those clubs in just a minute. We do a lot of um, partnerships with the community, which helps with me trying to, it frees up my time because I don't have to plan it, I just have to set it up and organize. So um, on the left hand side of the screen, we join together with um, the extension office and uh, every, uh, every child ready to know. I can't think of who she's with. But we offered a peewee program, the parents interacting with infants, um, where they were running the program. They utilized the library as a house. And I invited the people that were already coming into our library to join and get the word of mouth spread, uh, spreading through the community. Dr. Powell, he's a local gemologist who comes in and does the whole program for me. All I have to do is advertise. And the schools we have uh, invited to come in and do multiple different programs the one photo we have is the Music in the Schools program, where they come in, they hold the program in our library. We do have a staff member to helping them set up and things like that, but the program is there to run. So if you can work with your community, um, it frees up a lot of your time for any kind of planning that needs to be done because they're doing the program themselves. 
Our summer reading programs, we work with our local optimist group. There's a lot of times that budgets are hard to come by in our summer reading uh, programs to get some of those big performers in. And though we do have a small budget for our summer reading program, we also work with our uh, South New City Optimist Club. And during the holiday season, which ours just wrapped up, um, they have an annual wreath auction. And because it's held um, the last two years, it was held in the library. Um, and the staff helped work the wreath auction. This year they moved it to a new location to advertise another fairly new building in the community. Um, but the, the proceeds, some of the proceeds, the Optimist Club does everything with youth in the community, and so some of the proceeds come back to the, uh, to the library to help with pay for our big performers, such as we, we bring in a zoo um, with educating animals, we bring in uh, mad science uh, performance, we bring in jugglers, uh, puppeteers, and some of the, and the proceeds help pay for our performers. And so if your budget's really small for the summer reading program, Work with your community organizations and see what they can help offer to you. Um, consistency is a big thing with the program. You want to keep your programming consistent. Um, it's a major help for your families to help remember when to stop in the library, what day they need to be here. Being consistent in special programs, whether it be monthly or yearly, is also a benefit, but it's not as a benefit if you can ha have a program that's weekly. Like all my parents know when toddler time is or what day pat cake cows. Uh, program is held, they know Friday they need to be here at 10 o'clock for positive time, or Thursday they need to be here for the patty cake house if it's a baby. And so if you have it, they know consistently what day to show up on, and it, it's, a, it's a schedule for them. Our Wednesday night club that we've been able to introduce with uh, Shelly, she's my evening uh, children's librarian. Um, we, start, we started it late this year, so they're just in the beginning takeoff. Uh, the, the um, attendance isn't huge right now with them. We have a consistency of maybe five kids every Wednesday night for our club. Um, but word of mouth is something that how our programs grow in this community. And so it takes a little while. It might take six months before we see a huge increase in that. But we have um, robotics club. We work with the extension office again. Um, they come in, they bring their robotics in, and the kids get to build their robots and uh, program the computer to run the robots. We have a Lego club, which is structured building at times, and then there's also free building time so the kids can have fun. Um, that will help get your tween boys into the library as well. Uh, same with the Mad Scientist Club. We introduce new science experiments and activities with the kids. Now you have to realize that in our community, we have parents that work two shifts a lot of times, so these kids are not getting any of these hands-on activities like they did when I was a child growing up. My mom was a stay-at-home mom. We had the ability to build Legos with her or do different science experiments, like make our own silly putty and really simple things like that. Parents aren't able to do that today. And so that we, we as a library have taken that on to fill in these things that are missing in kids' lives. And the Technology Kids Club, we do right now have um, our traveling laptop we use for our technology classes, which I think Dan talked about her day. Um, but on Wednesday nights, it's not utilized, and so we have once a month we have a technology kids club where we use our laptop cart, um, and we let the kids choose what they need help with. If they need help with their Facebook or their email, or we will find a new game or application for them to try and introduce it to them. Some are education, some are just for fun, and so those are different things that we do with our our club every every Wednesday night. Um, you want to make the library a fun place. We do have, um, I believe Barnes & Noble is where we get our our posters. Um, we have Diary of Wimpy Kid poster up right now um, advertising the new book. We have our team space down in the lower left corner where we're putting up book reviews for the kids to, to push the books. Um, kids are always hanging out in there. We have a checker table kids are always playing with. I do happen to have a, a a skill of making cute cupcakes for the kids. And so I'll make cute cupcakes once in a while and bring in for the kids at a story time. Um, and then craft time. Some libraries only do reading or they'll do a finger playing reading, and that's great and that's perfect. I incorporate reading and puppets and story in our story time, but we also make a craft. And I'll tell you, those kids just look forward to making something to take home with them. Um, here is the craft in the very right 
the lower right hand corner of what they finished making. There was a little line there. I think it's two years old to do something like that. Um, the other three pictures are of my baby time. Um, we have all the siblings that do join us. I open the baby time. I say it's good for one or from birth to two years old. We do have some infants that are coming, um, but then we have the older siblings that aren't in school yet coming with their two-year-old siblings as well. We do a craft with them, which is something that parents can recreate at home. We happen to make uh, sensory bags with baby oil and paint, and it made marble painting inside of a bag. We get bubbles out, like the kids blow bubbles. We have puppets that the kids play with. It's very interactive and very encouraging for the parents and the kids to get on the floor and play together. So of course, we celebrate Dr. Seuss. Most people do. We had one of our staff members um, be able to dress up as Dr. Seuss this last year and walk around and play with the kids. They made their own Seuss creations. They had a guessing game of guess who the Seuss uh, character was. We had reading time as well. We have a successful, this is my first year having a very successful tab uh, group, um, very self-efficient. They can pretty much run themselves. It's taken me the four or five years to establish it this way. And so this year I was comfortable introducing um, an advisory board for our middle school kids, and that's our minions. They chose their own name. Um, tab is specifically high school, which is ninth through twelfth grade, and minions is our middle school kids, uh, sixth through eighth grade. Currently, we have 15 active high school tab members and eight active minion members. And what their job is, is they're running activities for other teens and the youth in our community. They try and help open up the library for others that may not always come in here. And I've seen a lot more boys coming in and being active tab members to make the library funner, uh, a funner place, a cooler place for them to hang out and be. These are a couple things of our tab program. Last year we had a spooky teen only Halloween party in the basement. Yes, it did take my time in the evening. We did it um, prior to Halloween. The kids had a blast. We had kids dress up. We had games. We had uh, one of the one of the kids is Hispanic, and his grandma and him made a pinata that we couldn't bust open because they made it so strongly. Um, and we just had use of the library basement. It was spooky and dark. We had black light. Um, it took myself to staff it, and that was it. I had all my teens. They brought their own music. They brought snacks in. It was very fun. They got to do their own type of thing. This year, what they wanted to do, and this was all the teens wanted to do it, they wanted to run a Halloween party for the kids in our community. And so we had a huge turnout for that. Um, Dave was in our, his jester costume down here, uh, reading and playing magic tricks with the kids. Our teams came up with the crafts they wanted to do. They created the games. We had Tim the Bullseye on the skeleton. We had a bean, bean bag toss and the Frankenstein's mouth. They did face painting. They created monsters, uh, paper plate monsters. They really went all out. And they came in and they decorated the whole kids' area for the Halloween party as well. Your teams in your community are a huge... Um, Asset. asset. Thank you, Dave. A huge asset um, to your to your library if you can get them to uh, participate in anything. And really give them the reign to take and give you the ideas. Be open to anything that they suggest because they have great ideas. They want to do a puppet show. They want to do so much with, um, with the kids in our community, too. They have plans to do a murder mystery dinner theater, which last one we did was three years ago, so I'll be working with a new tab group. Just a huge asset if you can encourage the kids to come in. And now it is Dan's turn. Okay, programming with adults. Um, you, you've never programmed uh, for adults, as far as programming with them. And um, part of the thing that uh, helps is bringing out most the best in your library staff. And each of our library staff members, not only work for CERT staff and do the regular job, but they all get in one way or another into programming, whether it's children or adults. So we include everybody and we include everybody based on uh, most of the time their interests, their ideas. Um, because you know, I'll have one set of ideas, Dave will have have one set of ideas, but if we take all of our staff and get their ideas together and get them motivated, then 
we can have even more programs and do more fun things. What's well, kind of frightening, we have these clothes just hanging around in our closets at home, so. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is from Talk Like a Pirate Day that we used a couple of years ago to introduce the Mango language of software that we have. We also try to connect with our library members. Um, this was during our band book week. Um, Unicorn. Uh, Dave's talking with one of the uh, people that uh, were there that morning. Uh, and we, we value the opinions and thoughts and ideas of uh, all of our card members. And then we also reach out to the rest of the community uh, that are not card members because we consider everybody of their own, they have a card or not, in our service area as being important. And we want to reach out to everyone. This is also from Van Books that we're able to get our city administrator on the right to come in and be part of the readathon. And on the left is our uh, newspaper reporter that covers a lot of our activities. So we're able to uh, make the most of that event to reach out to the broader community. Um, almost in almost in every interest um, is a potential library service. Uh, but the gardening club before we uh, came here, uh, gardening was not uh, really on our radar before Dave came here uh, in 2009. But Dave has an interest in gardening and got a community garden going as part of you know, an outreach for the library and uh, garden classes, uh, seed saving. Um, where now we had our first tomato tasting. Contest um, to try all the varieties of tomatoes that were grown in the community gardens this year. Angled Yarns is another program that has sprung up, I think, just in the last year or so from a couple of our uh, ladies that were interested in just getting together and practicing crochet and knitting and different things. And gossiping. Yeah, and gossiping. <laughs> that's, that's a big part of it. There are a couple of our, our members um, that, are, that are involved in that group, and they have a lot of fun doing what they do, and they've created a lot of, uh, a lot of unique items. The Scribes, again, is another group that just started this year. Scribes is a writing group. This is the front page of our uh, leader of our group, Angela. She um, gets the program going and we've had already one um, workshop, writer's workshop, and we meet monthly to uh, share ideas, do different writing activities, and just kind of keep each other going on the um, you know, practicing writing because that's a very solitary thing that's nice to have other people to talk to about it once in a while. As uh, uh, said, we have a lot of technology classes. The Spanish technology classes has been a very big uh, boon to our program. Uh, it's been one of our most successful things we've done. Uh, they've not only made the uh, help with attendance, but they've also made it like a core group that always comes to all the classes. And they are always ready to learn different things. And our uh, part time staff. Uh, Helps with that also our part of uh, the Spanish, uh, Spanish speaking staff members. And we have patron driven programs. Uh, some of the programs we start, some of the programs other people can uh, suggest. Um, there are also programs that maybe we suggest, but like one or two families or something to really uh, push it forward. Uh, the View Movies is an example of that. This is one of our members that uh, got uh, some recognition from the City Journal on uh, their interest in uh, monsters. I mean, he's writing the monster movie. I think his family for some time was one of the was one of the mainstays that made the B movies a, a popular uh, thing in our community. The quote show. Um, we've had different leaders and different. Uh, volunteers almost every year uh, with our quilt show, and it started off as just something we do. Now we work with the um, 
outlaw trail scenic byway to do uh, through the byway of the quiltway. That's usually in October. Uh, so the food stations from south to the Valentine travel Highway 12 and sample different gold activities for quilt uh, projects. Book clubs, this is something that has grown hugely and really without our doing a whole lot to promote it. We have a book club that I do cover to cover. It meets regularly. This is some of our recent books. Oh yeah, we have a book club in our team too. Right. So yeah. I forgot that. Yeah, we have a team team book club. We also have another book club of, of adult places that get together and discuss books. Uh, we also we also um, we also work with the Jackson Nebraska Book Club to uh, help get materials for them and uh, we will cross pollinate and our group will go to their meetings, sometimes their group will come to ours, but sometimes we'll do some short things together. Um, and so that's another area that we have kept going and really the members have really perpetuated that well. Uh, and then we have community-based programming, two of the uh, primary programs when we uh, moved into the building were the ESL program, ESL classes, and the GED classes that are um, things that were stalwarts we had planned on having from the time we started. We really don't have to do anything but give you know, offer a space uh, for them to teach those classes, but we encourage people to take them and uh, we try to find out from them what materials we can have that would most back up uh, what they're doing in their teaching. Uh, we've worked a lot with the uh, byway system in um, Nebraska. We've, we've done the Outlaw Trail uh, byway stuff with the uh, Gold Show. We also work with the Lewis and Park Highway, which is uh, all, we're also on that highway um, for Lewis and Park program, especially during the bicentennial time. And we always try to keep track of their events and see how we can plug in with them. Um, other community programs, we work with uh, the ALA and the uh, National Endowment for the Humanities to bring the Civil War, Lincoln, the Civil War, and the Constitution program to the South City area. Um, that was a, a really good program to have that uh, went through the, the Civil War as it related to the Constitution and um, was, was well attended and well spoken of in the community. This is one of our speakers, Grant Heater, who was our opening speaker for the um, program where he talked specifically about Lincoln and uh, the impact of his uh, presidency on the Constitution. Uh, we've also worked with, with uh, the National Endowment for Humanities to bring the Muslim Journeys bookshelf to our library. Um, this is a program that encourages understanding of the diversity of uh, the Muslim and you know, the Islamic community diversity of ideas and things. Uh, we promoted their book, we had a, a book talk, talk uh, where we had covered all the basic books and we review those periodically and promote them on our Facebook page to get people to read them and, and thinking about cultures other than just the Western uh, European cultures. And then the one book programs, one book, one sea land, and one book, one Nebraska. Uh, we participate with those every year, and those spur all sorts of uh, different reading ideas, but they also uh, are various programming. This year for One Book, One Sea we're doing the Orphan Train, so we're going to have speakers on, people on the Orphan Train in Nebraska uh, come here in April for that program. Band Books Week. Is another activity. This was really highly uh, popular. A lot of it was more well received than I even expected. Uh, we had a readathon on one of the days during Band Books Week where 
we invited people to come in and sit down and read 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, whatever. Um, and we had several, our collection of banned books there, but we encouraged them to just come in and read, read it. And, and a lot of them picked up one of the books on the shelf. And My team participated in that as well. They were very proud to uh, be identified as, you know, a, a rebellious reader, if you will. Well. Yeah, being a, a rebel is, is kind of a fun thing. And um, how do we get the word out? Uh, the website is one of our uh, starting points as far as getting the word out to the community about different programming. We also developed an electronic newsletter that we have a link to on our homepage uh, that gives us gives, uh, all of our programming, it gives bios of the different staff members, reading collections, new, uh, new book books, and um, as well as uh, the programming for the month. We also have a page in our city newsletter that goes out to every, everyone that has, every household that has a water bill or electric bill, they all, they all get a, uh, an insert from us each month. Um, Tells about our programming there. Um, and our Facebook page, of all of the different social media, Facebook is our most popular and, and most used uh, site. And um, that's a source for a lot of library information. We've had a lot of contact with our community via the Facebook page. And then we have the library blog that we up with uh, library information or uh, things will, will be of interest to our patrons as well as just our program and activities. We also have a Pinterest board which we relatively, uh, is relatively new to our library of starting. We have a lot of, uh, a lot of our staff that pins things, um, but we have just recently created a Pinterest board as well for our library. For different displays we do different reads, uh, read alike, different crafts you can create that are book oriented, things like that. Right. And we also have um, uh, postcards that we have at the desk of different programs. We uh, put two programs at a time, one on each side, to uh, try to interest and entice more people to uh, come and get involved in a program they may not have considered before. Now back to me with the phone ringing in the background. Um, one of the things that keep emphasizing over and over, utilize the community as much as you can. The library, Cardinal Festival, this will be our fourth year coming up. Uh, the library, the city, and one other group were the ones that actually started the community event. And I'm glad now that a lot of other groups have gotten involved because I was putting in 13, 14 hour days up during Cardinal Festival when it was starting. Um, but now we've kind of pared back our involvement in it. You know, we do certain things specifically for it, but we're not being as much into it as what originally it was. And now this is going to be a continuing thing year after year, and it's the citywide festival. Um, the Chamber of Commerce, we've been working with them a lot, and the community college. And one of the things that the chamber now is doing is this Christmas tree was actually donated to the library this year, planted before winter set in. Um, the chamber purchased the lights and everything, and now this is one of their programs, is that they do a winter holiday right before the shopping season is supposed to kick off. And then the library, in cooperation with that, we have a box that people could drop off uh, like their names to win things. We put a display up in the display case for businesses in town. So that's kind of cooperation back and forth between the city and the chamber. We keep talking about building programs out of the interest areas that your staff, friends, group, or other volunteers may have. I'm one of those directors. I don't mind my staff looking at magazines during the work day. Just as long as they're doing their work. But you get a lot of ideas out of these magazines. Something as simple as, I think this was a country woman magazine, and um, 
one day one of the staff was looking at it and they came up to me after talking with another one and said, well what do you think about trying this? So that's a new idea that we're going to be starting this next year just from that. Um, my background with gardening. We started a community garden group here in town and then started the community gardens and the library was one of the main ones that started that. We now have two big garden spots and out of that have now grown a community farmers market. A community orchard is just now in the process of being put in this next spring. The uh, orchard will be planted. Right now they're doing classes at the library on how to take care of orchards. And then this year we also started the community garden club and get master gardeners to come in and talk to beginning gardeners on how you can grow stuff. Um, and then kind of out of that became the Seed Savers Library. We had been doing seed distribution for four years and I had never known that other libraries were calling it Seed Savers Library. So we had been doing it for four years. So We've been doing this for a while. This year, we did a tomato tasting contest at the end. We had six judges that judged. We had participants. You can kind of see some of the growers in the background watching, paying attention to what was going on. We had six categories. We, were, we had almost as many participants as Seed Savers Exchange, which has been doing this for years and years and years. So I was very impressed. Next year, we've already talking besides having the tomato tasting contest, also having a salsa contest. And there are some of the categories right there. And then, once again, one of the staff had a skill that we didn't know anything about till I kind of walked by, saw a magazine sitting on the shelf, walked up, and I just have to say, you know, that'd be cool if we could find somebody that knew how to carve pumpkins. And she kind of like, well, I do that. And, you know, my idea of carving pumpkins is taking the big old butcher knife, putting, you know, getting the triangle eyes and that stuff out. And she knew actually how to carve the cool looking pumpkins. So we actually had a class on that, and that's now going to become one of our usual things. Once again, without having a movie theater in town, we are the movie theater. So we do a wide variety of what we do reel to reel, what we call real life type situation movies. Uh, Dan talked about the Bee Movie Night at the Bijou, and once again, very unique type group of clientele that come to those type of movies. So you can really get creative on what you want to do. The classic movies and discussion, we tried that for about two years, never got huge attendance, so we're moving on to a new idea with that. Um, but did you hear how long Dave said that we tried the program before we decided to quit? And we would get anywhere from one person to maybe 10 people show up. But it never caught on to what we kind of wanted, but we kept trying. So we're going to kind of try now what I call unique ideas, like a spaghetti dinner. Uh, we'll serve a spaghetti dinner, and what type of movie do you serve with a spaghetti dinner? A spaghetti western. So that's kind of the theme, what we're going to go for. You look for unique kind of twist on things and introduce those at different times. Plus, there's more things that we've done. The immigration services. We had that here at the library for about two years. It got very popular. Once people in the community start knowing, it got so busy here. And then there was people going over to the agency where they were actually doing the work that we've shifted everything over there now. So now people are now knowing to go back over there. Um, Medicare sign up. Trivia content, I mean, just all these different things that spun out of things. The sloping workshops, food canning classes. We actually just purchased um, two canners, and um, that's something that somebody's going to be able to check out in the future. It has all the stuff in there except for the canning jars. They'll have to buy their own canning jars. But we'll be doing classes on that. We put in an art gallery. Like I said, when the walls, when we first started, take those pictures down and that's what the library looks like. And the art gallery is done by volunteers. They come in and put everything up themselves. It stretches around the whole reference area back in that area. We added a 50 plus area, which now is where the garden groups meet, the uh, 
Tangled Yarns group meet. Um, the scribes, you know, a wide variety. The book club met there the other night. And all the chairs and everything that's back in that area is designed for more mature people that might not be able to get up and down quite as easily. The chairs are actually a little higher than normal, and you can stand up without struggling to stand up. We added the mobile computer classroom, which was through a grant which the Nebraska Library Commission was able to get. Um, we now have 15 laptops that we can do classes with. We have the LCD projector. And we've contemplated now getting to the point of getting a couple cases and start taking those out into the community, like to the senior center and places like that. Um, these are the 42 tech classes that we teach in English and Spanish. Um, each one lasts 30 minutes to 45 minutes. And we kind of have a sequence set up that if someone is interested in trying to get a better job, these are the type of courses that you want to take. If you are brand new to computers, these are the courses that you want to take. And so, like I said, the Spanish ones have been extremely popular. So if you have anybody that speaks both Spanish and English and they're interested in volunteering, get them involved in doing tech classes for you. What's the future hold for us? Cooking classes. That came out of that one staff looking at a magazine and we're doing a one for December. We've got something planned for January and February and we're slowly kind of getting ideas on doing different things like that. Film classes. You know, how to create your own movie. Genealogy classes. Community health workers. We are going to be one of the sites and it will be housed here at the library and twice a week there will be a community health worker that will be located here. People can come in and ask questions of them. And then they're looking for specialized um, individuals right now that are going to take training and be out in the community to also answer community health needs. Social worker is the one that we are really interested in trying to get going. Um, through the community health worker, her and I have been talking about the contacts needed to make. But I would love to be able to see a point for especially the rural communities that can't, that don't have social workers around anymore, that we are on a rotating schedule and we are the location for the social worker one day per week or two days per week. They come in and answer the basic questions and take care of that lot of simple little things that the library staff does right now. Adult, teens, and young children's computer areas. We're looking at redoing our tech area here so that the little, little kids, we just got a grant that we got two of the AWE type computers. They're going to be set up. And we're looking at designing possibly with the schools in the summertime that kids would be assigned to come to the library and do summer work at the library on these computers on working on the skills that they're lacking have a specialized just adult area for technology and a specialized area for them to use. So that it's a lot of libraries run into the problems where the kids and the adults don't quite get along when they're doing technology together. Um, the last thing I can say, everybody always goes, my goodness, how much money do you guys have in your budget to be able to run this? Um, we've spent maybe about $15,000 over five years for this. So about $3,000 a year budget-wise. And a lot of our things are free. We specifically look for things that we could do for relatively no cost at all. Our movies are part of our collection that we have. Uh, we're well known in our area for, we draw a lot of people from three different states to get library cards here and check out our movies. So um, we're well known for that. Our kids program is so attractive that we get people from free, well, from all three states in here that come actually to our kids programs. So they don't even go to their own local library. So that's a big thing to us. Um, if we can do it, if we can figure a way utilizing staff, utilizing volunteers, we try to do it. So it almost times up. Um, are there any questions out there? All right. Uh, thanks, Dave and Odessa and Dan. Um, does anybody have any questions? Uh, nothing came up while you were talking. I think everyone was listening very intently. 
um, to all the, the great uh, programming and things that you've been doing there. Um, if anyone does have any questions, type them into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. Or if you have a microphone, just let me know. I have a microphone. I want to ask a question, and I can unmute you. Um, that was a lot. I remember when we did this one two years ago, um, guys, and it was, and then I was just stunned by how much <laughs> um, of an increase and in how much you've done. Um, I was going to ask about the money, but you mentioned that already about how you um, about that, but. Um, as, as far as staffing goes, um, I know Odessa, you were new in two thousand nine, and Dave, you as well. Um, did you do have to increase? I mean, this must take a lot of. I'm sure a lot of people are wondering how much time does it take to do all of this, and did you have to like increase your staff a lot, or how did you how did you manage to pull off such a huge increase in the programming and the services that you're offering? Um, well, actually, we had one full time staff member who retired, and I was able to replace her with three part-time people, huh? but like Dan with his tech classes when he does them, these are all things that we all know how to do. Everybody kind of went through and said, okay, I know how to do this, I know how to do that. I really don't have to plan. I mean, you're pretty much putting together, there's a PowerPoint that took time. Um, but once that's done, Dan, his Thursday afternoons are pretty much his tech time where he's got that set aside. If nobody comes for the tech class, then he still does his reference questions and his mm -hmm. other little things that he does. Uh, when I have mine, I set mine specifically that I do in times that I know I'm probably not going to have a meeting I have to go to or something like that. If I do have to go somewhere, one of the others can step in. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, with the story times, if you can repeat your themes, um, my, well, my story times are all thematical. You can do two, three different story times each week to encourage multiple people coming in. So it takes one planning time, you know, an hour to find your books, your crafts, create your master, mm -hmm. and you're ready to go. And you can get two or three programs out of that one um, as long as you have it at different times, different days, you know. And yeah, so I thought that was, that was a really good suggestion that you made, yeah, that you don't just do it once the one book one time you just you say we're going to do it at 10 a.m. and at 2 p.m. and maybe it's you know and so so on multiple days because everyone's schedules all these parents and the kids are going to have different schedules too that they need to work around and that's a great suggestion yeah yep and hers is probably the most time intensive I think Dan and I mm -hmm. probably have the easiest for programs because so much of ours you know how hard is it to put together a movie you know mm -hmm. and for us it's just naturally stuff we would do anyway with the Dan does the web page, so, you know, just type in this that we've got a movie at such such a time or, you know, little things like that. Um, some of the things do take a lot more time. I go out to meetings uh, with a public health program. That was several different special meetings. There's another organization I work with that I go to, and they've been in that group for four years and I show up for the meetings and um, so I mean a lot of these things like I said they don't some of them just don't pop up overnight mm -hmm. and other things are just extremely easy the art gallery that was like one phone call I found somebody that was interested in doing it we've never done anything since then mm -hmm. when I was three-quarter time it took a lot of time to try and get everything initiated and started to change our library into what it is now. But now, um, with myself being full-time, and I do have the evening uh, children's librarian, I have a day that is set aside for tech classes, and it's also my planning day. So if I don't have anybody come for my tech classes on this specific day, I can do all of my planning in that one day mm -hmm. and have it done for the rest of the week and or for the next week. And so you just, you just, We'll find you'll you'll be able to create your schedule to find the time if you, if you just want if if you have the desire to do it. Yeah, I think that's I'm a good tip to... there. That um, in the beginning, like you just said, Odessa, it may take more a lot of work to get started and get figure It'll out. Like you guys, yeah, you guys you had to... to pretty much change the whole focus of what the library was because when you came in, it was none of these things. But once right. you get it all figured out and how it's going to work it after after that first big initial push, it's going to be just like no big deal, I can do a new one, you know, it'll, right. you'll have the, you right. have this process down, yeah. And you'll know where to go for your ideas and for mm -hmm. your, for your craft, you know, if you do crafting, you'll have your websites down, you'll have your set things that you go to to know. My filing cabinet, I have two 
drawers. I have my four drawer filing cabinet, and it's the uh, really long drawers. I don't know how to describe it, but it's mm -hmm. full of my four years of almost five years of story time that I've done. And mm -hmm. so if I get stuck or I run short on planning time, I go back to one that I did four years ago, pull it out. Whoop, there it is. Yeah, those <laughs> kids aren't gonna those kids aren't gonna be coming to it now. So. <laughs> Yeah, I've been trying to convince her she could do that more regular. Now because <laughs> the kids four years ago are now in grade school. Junior high, whatever. Right, you're gonna have a whole new batch of little of yeah. kids that have right. never I seen that one before. <laughs> so, but we have not really repeated a whole lot of things. I keep track of all the movies that we've shown over the time. I think there's probably about the only movie that I'm gonna show now for a second time is It's a Wonderful Life, yeah. and otherwise. Everything is relatively brand new. Um, you know, it's just kind of, and the big thing is don't put yourself in a box. Really think outside of the box a lot. Um, One thing that we're, I want to work on with the adult programming is we are, unfortunately, and I imagine a lot of libraries are this way, parents like to drop their kids off in the kids section of the library and go do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. And so we want to organize, um, it's, it's an idea in my head, and I want to organize it where we do have a craft time specifically for kids while the adults are doing a program on the adult end of the library. Yeah. And so we're having two things. We're still, you know, watching those kids, but we have activities for them while they're getting to do their activities. It's going to be like a, a parent's night out at the library. That's a cool idea. We do have one question that came in um, about it. Uh, when you're when you're counting up your statistics for the programs you've got there, are you including ones where you just offer space and the partners facilitating their own event, and so like the library staff is not in involved in it? You're just saying yes, you can use our meeting room for whatever. Does that get included in your uh, statistics, or do you count that it's differently? Like for the GED ESL classes, that's the community college doing that whole thing they're using. You know, that doesn't get counted. Okay. But like, um, say when we did the music in the schools, we set up the whole thing. We kind of coordinated it. The schools came in, did the presentation. Those kind of counts we did take mm -hmm. because that was something that we actually participated in too. Right. When I organized with the community, um, like the extension office and such, to bring in, or the gemologist who came in with his gym. I made the initiation, I contacted him, I got it set up, I advertised it, the kids came in and utilized our space. We counted that as a program that we did, even though he was the one running the program. Mm -hmm. Cool. Oh, she says, thanks for the clarification on the stats there. Um, just a couple of comments have come in. Um, very impressed with how you turned your library around to meet community needs. Thank you for sharing. Um, I thought that was great, too. One thing that I noticed Ed, that you guys did, and I've seen other libraries do it as well, is looking into the community to see what is missing. You said there is no movie theater, so you've become that for the town. Um, I know another town in Nebraska, there was nowhere in town to um, print out photos. You know, like you would go to, like, your local Walgreens or Walmart and bring your um, – flash drive or whatever and be able to actually print out the pictures. There's nowhere that did that. So the library um, figured out and was able to get a photo kiosk so people would come to the library for that. So I think Hi. that's something that you guys have done and, and that's just a great tip is don't just think about, like you said, Dave, don't you know, think outside the box. Look for what's missing in the community and become that thing. Um, and that was one big thing with our DVD collection, why it grew so large. Cause we have one red box in the community and that's it. Wow. And, yeah. and our DVD collection is so unique compared to probably most libraries that we draw a lot of people just specifically for that. Mm -hmm. And we do have one other uh, comment uh, from actually Brian Moss, who's the out at, at the Eastern Library System here in Nebraska. She, he want, is hoping that you might be presenting at our NLA Fall Conference next year. Possibly on something, because it is being held up there in South Sioux City. Has anybody submitted anything? Oh. No, not yet. No. no, no we, well, you guys should. We're going to be right in your town. Um, he, he looks forward to visiting the library and, see, and seeing what you're doing there. I want to come and visit, actually, and see, because I keep hearing about it whenever you guys do sessions on here on Encompass Live. I want to see that aviary. I want to see those birds. So I'm going to yeah, it's really cool. make yeah, a point when I'm up there to see it. Or we'll let you crawl in the aviary with a bead in your hand. <laughs> Feed the bird. Okay. 
as long as I don't, as long as I don't get pooped on, I'll be okay. <laughs> well, that we can't guarantee. <laughs> okay. Any other last minute questions from anybody on the line um, here today? Since we have just just a little past eleven o'clock now, so it's about our hour. I mean, the big thing I emphasize over and over and over again, you know, the old idea of what a library is, and we have real good examples just right across the river from us. They are very old-fashioned type library, mm -hmm. and we draw half our kids attended parents for our kids program because they don't like what they do over there. It's mm -hmm. a story, and you go home. And here they have a story, they do a craft, they have a snack, and the kids are here for three hours with their parents. And not doing my program. They're here reading books and playing afterwards. Mm -hmm. After it's done, they still stick around and use more of the library's resources. Have, yep. Yeah, we do have um, a puppet show, a puppet stage for the kids to play with. We have educating toys. So it's a little playroom that they hang out in for, you know, an hour or two after the story time is even done. So we schedule so many tech classes because we have so many different shifts of people. Like right now, we've got a Spanish tech class that's going on, um, and then there may be one in the evening another time. And then Dan will have some in the afternoon. I'll have them in the morning, afternoon, and per day. So. You know, you have to be flexible to your community. You know, if I could figure a way to do one at 2 a.m. in the morning, we would do one at 2 a.m. in the morning because we have people getting off shift. But only Dave would do that yeah. one. Yeah. I'm, I'm the only salary person. So I <laughs> well, maybe that's what you'll come and tell us about in a couple of more years. <laughs> well, that is one of the things we, we put on the questionnaire. Would it benefit people to have the library open later on certain days or mm -hmm. earlier on certain days and going as late as 11 p.m. or midnight because you have people getting off shift at 10 p.m. Again, Just, that would be all day because the rest <laughs> of us want to go home. <laughs> well, it um, doesn't look like any other new questions have come in while we've been chatting, so I think we um, are safe to wrap it up for this morning. Um, thank, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, guys, Dave, Odessa, and Dan. That was great, as usual. Um, lots of information was poured out there to everyone. Um, and uh, we will, um, Dave, if you can send me that PowerPoint presentation, I will upload it to our SlideShare account as well. So it will be available in the, um, with, along with the recording afterwards. And I'm going to pull back presenter control here. Do, do, do. Good luck. And... There we go. To just wrap up for the day, and like I said, um, I have been um, on our SlideShare account. We've got the um, the handouts that Dave mentioned. The uh, actually list of the technology classes that you offer, uh, you sent me, and the evaluation. And I've been saving saving into the commission's delicious account. Um, any of the things I could catch that were websites that might be out there that were um, things that were mentioned during the sessions. So this will be included as well in the. Um, archive when the recording is up. Um, so that will wrap it up for this morning's show. As I said, the show is recorded, has been recorded, and will be available here on our archived Encompass Live Sessions page, where you can see here we've got all of our previous shows, as I said, going all the way back to January 2009 when we first started, so you can watch all those there. And I hope you'll join us next week when our topic is on a, a unique, well, I hope it's unique, a, a collection that some people have heard of and think is, oh, yeah, we always have that, and some people have never heard of, um, cake pan collections. Lots of libraries are doing this, um, those kind of uh, cake pans that make different things, like a picture of Barbie or something like that, um, or a dinosaur. Um, and this is a library in Iowa that's going to be joining us, North Liberty Community Library. Dee Crowner is their uh, library director. And they have a collection of over 250 cake pans that they are going, that they have, and they... Um, are 
going to she's going to be sharing with us what they are doing there with that. So I hope you'll you'll uh, join us next week for that. Um, also, Encompass Live is on Facebook. So if you are a big Facebook user, please do go ahead and go over there and like our page on it on Facebook. We post when new sessions are being added, um, when it, something is started. Like this morning, I said you can join us right now on the fly. Um, when the recordings are available, we post here as well. So when it is done and processed and ready for you to watch, you'll be able to go there and. Um, find that out. So um, that will wrap it up for today. Thank you very much for joining us and we will see you uh, next time. Bye-bye.